Okay, so now we're gonna talk about disorders of the hair. I also wanna mention that um, hair loss may also be a side effect of certain drugs. Read the FYI box. It says that there's a charity which is known as Feel Better, um, Look Good, Feel Better, LGFB, and it's a free global service that was created in 1989. Um, and it helps um, beauty technicians to help um, you know cancer patients, wig cutting, wig styling, all that good stuff. So make sure you research that, it's a great charity. So some of the disorders of the hair range from um, things that are troublesome, not necessarily lethal. So one of the most common um, is canities, and this is the technical term for gray hair. It's the result of um, hair losing its pigment, and the complaint is that they want their natural hair back, so then you have to color it back to their natural. Or, you know, the opposite, when you're coloring hair, if someone has an extreme amount of canities in one area, you'll have to use a special formula for here and a different one for there, because when you're covering gray, there's special rules of color that we have to follow. Know that congenital candidies exist at or before birth. It is caused in albinos when they're born without pigment. They lack um, all the pigment at all, and that's why their eyes are red, and their hair is that almost like white yellow color. What you're seeing when you look at an albino's hair is actually the internal structure of hair, and typically when the hair is super light, you can actually kind of see the water enter the hair. It's hard to explain, but when you actually see this in the shampoo bowl, it's really interesting. Um, the correction for candidies is just to color back. Um, acquired candidies is what the biggest complaint is in the salon. It develops age and it's a result of genetics. Um, genetics is responsible for premature candidies. There's also acquired candidies which may develop due to prolonged anxiety or illness, like the old um, wives tale that fear, not fear, um, fright causes gray. Usually when you're stressing yourself out, you're gonna age your body and that's what will lead to premature graying. Ringed hair is a variety of candidies characterized by alternating bands of gray and pigmented hair throughout the strand of hair. So what you'll see in the hair strand, it almost looks like a, um, the old you know, emo scene style coontails where it's light, dark, light, dark, or gray, pigmented, gray, pigmented. It looks pretty scary. If you have a severe enough amount of this, it'll look, make your hair look like it's blotchy and you'll end up looking like one of those um, Rorschach ink blots. Um, the way you d deal with this is um, color, um, you know, all light or all dark. Hypertrichosis, also known as hair sooties, is a condition of abnormal hair growth, typically known as a werewolf disease. So, like not having, people always say that they rather have too much hair, which is not always true because if you think about this, when you have an abnormal hair growth, you'll have more um, terminal hair everywhere in places you don't want it. So, like your nose, your cheeks, you almost look like a wolf man. There's actually a family, I believe it's in Mexico, they're studying that has had this trait and they're figuring out what causes this and the way to reverse this. Um, a lot of these treatments, including baldness, are now looking at gene therapy to um, turn on or off the gene to change the um, body's response to it. So, mustaches or light beards in women are an example of um, hypertrichosis or hirsutes. The treatment for this is waxing, um, sugaring, which is a better way because with waxing, you're only removing it at the surface. Chemical depilatories, you're not going in there and killing the hair so the hair grows back. With sugaring, it's very natural, you're going on there and you're flicking it. And what that's doing is it's grabbing on, it's going into the follicle, grabbing onto the hair bulb, and it's gonna damage that erector pili muscle so the hair's not gonna grow back as well. And the more you do sugaring, the more permanent the result. It also exfoliates too. Um, tweezers, epilators, threading, sugaring, um, laser, photoepilation, and electrolysis are the ways to treat um, hypertrichosis. The next, um, issue with hair is something we see all the time and it's called trichoptilosis, which sounds really scary but it also means split ends. So if you think about this, um, think of the end part of the word, choptilosis, like you chop off those split ends, that's how I remember it. Hair conditioning treatments help to lubricate it um, but will not repair split ends. The best way to fix split ends because damage travels upward is to cut it right off. Where I always say you do a, a big haircut, when you start to cut that healthy hair, hair will appear extra healthy because you're getting rid of the um, damaged hair. It's almost like when you have an infection, the doctor usually removes the healthy tissue too because they don't want the infected tissue to spread. Hair damage starts from here and it works its way up. Trick, trichorexis nodosa is a technical term for knotted hair. Um, it's caused by, it's characterized by brittleness and the formation of nodule swellings around the hair shaft. The hair breaks easy and the broken fibers spread out like a bush along the hair shaft. Treatments include softening the hair with conditioners and moisturizers. You can even see this under your hair if you had a bad knot and you just cut it off. As hairdressers, we all kind of do that when we're behind the chair. Um, it looks pretty scary. It almost looks like um, a frayed rope. So if you think of a rope being your hair, 
and the rope starts to get frayed and frayed and frayed, that's what it starts to look like. That is the two, um, you know, examples they have. The middle one is the um, knotted hair. Manic, manilyctris. Manilyctris is the technical term for beaded hair. The hair breaks easily between the beads or nods. Treatments include um, hair and scalp conditioning. This may be on a person whose hair is not able to get super long without being um, unhealthy. Um, fr fragilitius carineum is a technical term for brittle hair. The hair may split at any part of the hair length and treatment includes scalp conditioning and hair cutting above the split to prevent further damage because it will travel upward. You also want to do um, scalp massages, uh, make sure the client knows that they should see a dietitian, get some, uh, get put on a good diet because it might be related to the nourishment they're getting. Now for the disorder of the scalp. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to take a break right here. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this um, in about 15 minutes because I just want to go over this again in case I miss something. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back. Um, I always get confused with this section with disorders of the scalp because it technically should be called diseases of the scalp. Um, part of the reason is that scalp is skin and like all skin, it's always in a constant state of renewal. So hair is hair, scalp is skin. Um, if you hurt your scalp, you'll feel it. If you hurt your hair like you cut this amount of hair right here, you're not going to feel it. But if you scrape your scalp, you'll feel that because the scalp is skin, it is living, it's shedding. The average person will shed about nine pounds of dead skin each year. I know it's kind of gross if you think about collecting all that. The skin cells of a normal healthy scalp fall off naturally um, as small dry flakes, flakes up being noticed. If it's a disorder, if your body is shedding too much or a disease is making it do that, then it will um, occur as dandruff. Dandruff can easily be mistaken as a dry scalp because the symptoms of both conditions are a flaky, irritated scalp, but there is a huge difference. Dandruff commonly produces an oily scalp, but just as the name indicates, the scalp is dry without the conditions of a dry scalp. The flakes from a dry scalp are much smaller and less notable, noticeable. The flakes of dandruff are larger and very noticeable. They may also have a distinctive odor or may have um, like a sebum uh, solution called scatula. Dry scalp can result from contact dermatitis, sunburn, or extreme age and is usually made worse by a cold, dry climate usually the winter time. Um, read the side panel on caution, and this is about speaking to a client about a scalp disorder, because you don't want to offend them. If you, you know, one of the best things is if you ever have a client with head lice, if you open up the hair and you see all these little bugs crawling around there, your first reaction is to like gasp. You want to not do that, and you also don't want to scream like, ah, because what's going to happen is everyone in the salon is going to freak out. So typically this tells you to um, you know, get your manager involved and get your um, instructor involved. That's a smart idea because it's covering your behind. What you want to do is explain to them, I think they have headlights, can you just come and check this? And what's going to happen is a manager will take it upon them and look at it and say, hey, um, can you just come outside real quick? And they'll tell them, I'm sorry, but you know, you do have headlights, we saw them. You need to go to a physician and you need to get um, a note saying you're clear of this. Because we can't work with the client with a headlights from infectious disease in the salon. So know that dandruff, um, they have a technical term for dandruff and it's called pityriasis. It's characterized by an excessive production and accumulation of skin cells. Instead of normal one at a time shedding of tiny individual skin cells, dandruff is shedding of an accumulation of larger visible clumps of dead skin. There's an ongoing debate about dandruff, but what they've narrowed it down to is they think that it's caused by a fungus known as malastasia. So malassezia is a naturally occurring fungus that's present on all human skin, but causes the symptoms of dandruff when it grows out of control. Some individuals um, are more prone to getting malassezia's irritating effects because what happens is if malassezia is, um, oh, what is the word? If you are, you know, perspire very heavily, that's usually very common. So your genetics also include that. If you are, um, genetically just prone to having more of this fungus on you, that's also another risk. So fungus tends to grow in a dark, damp places, and when you create that right environment for it to grow, it flourishes. So usually what malassezia, um, when you're studying pathology, they go in there and they try to figure out what pathogen is causing what, and there's different ways of doing that. Malassezia was seen on a lot of people with really bad dandruff, but there's also other funguses that may be present and cause this. Um, when you're stressed, your immune system is a lot lower, and that can also be why this fungus can grow out of control. It's almost like when we have the bacteria for acne on our faces, we have it in a healthy amount, but our diet, our stress level, our genetics may change that and make us more prone to getting infected by our own bacteria. Um, know that um, 
modern anti-dander shampoos they'll contain antifungal agents such as pythionine zinc and selenium sulfide or keto colonyosi keto col on ozel that is one word to control dander by suppressing the growth um, notice they're not killing it they're just inhibiting the growth they're slowing it down anti-dander shampoos that contain um, Pithro pithrionine zinc are available in a variety of formulas for all hair types and are gentle enough to be used every day if needed, even on color-treated hair. Frequent use of an anti-dandruff shampoo is essential for controlling the dandruff. And although good personal hygiene and proper cleaning and disinfecting are important, dandruff is typically not contagious. So the reason being, if you have someone with just some dandruff or it's not like, you know, too bad, you can treat them. Um, you can color the hair as you normally would. They might get a little irritated, but it's important to use that as a selling point. Like, hey, if you notice any of these like flakes and they'll say, yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know what I can do to fix it. That's a good retail point. You can then sell them your own, you know, brand of um, dandruff shampoo that is in the salon. Um, on the flip side, there are types of dandruff and other um, fungals infections that you should not treat in the salon. So you guys can take your five minute break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about some pretty nasty stuff. We're gonna talk about bacterial scalp infections, parasitic scalp infections of the head, and um, pityriasis, which is a really nasty fungus. And then we're gonna to try to go to scalp analysis and finish up the chapter.